Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thanks for joining us, and welcome to uh, the Marks Group Crystal Reports Tips and Tricks uh, monthly webinar. We do these webinars once a month. You can always see the current batch of tips or tips from ages past if you go to blog.marksgroup.net. And if you scroll down on alongside the right here, you can see our, our tips and tricks for all kinds of software divided into year and month. A nice resource to have, incidentally, you can actually search our blog right here. Um, very good resource to have. So today I was kind of looking over my notes uh, of what I'm going to be presenting and uh, I've really bitten off quite a bit here. Uh, even though there's only three bullet points, there's a lot of stuff to cover. Uh, I wanted to show you guys uh, how to use mid and more to the point how to um, get comfortable cutting apart strings and starting to manipulate some of the, the data you're getting out of the system. Uh, it's a very typical situation that a crystal reporter is working with um, imperfect or, or dirty data as it were. So using mid and certainly uh, with the in string or instr function uh, we're going to be able to really get pretty creative as far as what we're pulling out of uh, fields especially when, when we have data values mashed into one field. And uh, also I want to show you guys how to use buckets. And the example I'm going to give today is how to use a, a date bucket. How to separate dates into a 30, 60, 90 days uh, sort of grouping. So let's go ahead and jump right in. Uh, the first thing I want to do actually uh, is uh, look at the date buckets because that's the, uh, the easier portion of our webinar. So let's imagine we just have a, uh, just a very simple report. This is actually hooked up to a gold mine database and what we're looking at here is just my customer table. If I preview it, we just have a list of uh, company contact, uh, state, and the create on date. And on the back end, that's an actual a date field. And whenever we're doing any kind of date math or date evaluation, we want to be very conscious of what the data type is on the back end. If it happened to be stored in plain text, that would be all well and good, but a conversion would have to occur. In this case, uh, Goldmine's kind of uh, done the heavy lifting for us. So this is a date field. So the first thing that we can do with a date field is actually perform some pretty useful math on it. So let's just go ahead and create a new formula. And all I want to do is calculate the number of days that have passed since this create on date. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new formula. When I create my formulas, I like to prefix them with FRM. That way when I'm looking at a big honking list of formulas in my uh, field explorer, I can kind of really easily see what's what. So I'm going to call this uh, form record age. And I hit OK. Uh, and again, it's going to drop us right into the formula editor. Uh, and really, uh, if you haven't used it a lot or am a bit uncomfortable with it, I'm going to really recommend that you get in here and start playing around. Um, this is really where a lot of the uh, the, the really powerful stuff in, in Crystal Law resides. So let's again, we'll just keep in mind what we're talk what we're doing. Uh, we always want to keep in mind the end result that we're looking after. So again, we want to take our create on date. And we want to know how many days have passed. Uh, what Crystal does is actually it provides a current date function. And I know that that's a Crystal function because when I type it in, it turns blue. Uh, if I didn't know off the top of my head that current date returns today's date, I can always go up here to my function tree and look in my date time. And I see that there's a current date, a current time, and a current date time. And all of these uh, so-called auto magical functions return those values as they are when the report is generated. Uh, so let's go ahead and take our current date and subtract our creation date from that. Because uh, the date values or the values involved are date types, uh, Crystal's going to be able to perform that math. I go ahead and I save my formula. Whenever I'm working on a formula, and especially when the formula is in progress, I find it's very handy to actually drag the formula right next to the field that it's operating on or operating with. That way when I preview the report I can very easily see um, if anything's awry. So in this case uh, it's just calculating uh, the number of days that have passed since uh, the creation date of the record. And again how we did that was we took the um, the current date being the larger date because that's now and that's in the past and subtracting the past date from it. So again, the more recent date is always the larger date when we're thinking about mathematical uh, uh, evaluations. Okay, so that's great. Well, we have the, uh, the number of days that have passed uh, since the record's been created. And what, what we'd like to do is actually separate these guys into a couple of different groups based upon the number of days that, that have uh, passed. Now, we could certainly substitute 
like an invoice table and get a 30, 60, 90 day report out of invoices or even history items. I'm just showing you this off of a company table just to kind of give you a, a flavor for what's possible. So what we're going to do is create a new formula because what, what we really want to have in Crystal is formulas acting upon formulas. And that's really going to simplify some of your formula code. And I'm going to show you an example right here. So again, what we want is we already have the number of days as record age. So what we want now is our age bucket, we'll call it. So what the age bucket is going to do is, is uh, evaluate the number of days that have passed. And based upon what the, the number of days is, uh, kick out a value. And I'm going to show you how that works. Uh, when we're in our formula editor working with a text formula or a string formula like this, I just want to demonstrate briefly that the formula is really designed to kick out or return or print a text value. So in this case, we could just make the, the most simple formula in the world, and that's all a formula really has to be. I just want to show you that. So again, when we're working within a formula, what we're trying to get at is, is for this, based upon the number of days, kick out a piece of text. So we want to just keep in mind what we're doing. So when we're evaluating numbers like this, we want to start with an if. And this is an if-then-else statement. Uh, it's a very uh, basic um, construct just within programming itself. Uh, pretty much available anywhere in the world. So we're going to go if our age which is a formula, remember we want formulas acting upon formulas, help simplify the code. If our age is uh, greater than or equal to zero, and if our age is less than or equal to 30, then we're going to call it something. Then we're going to say 30 days. Now we want to keep going because we want to evaluate you know, 30 to 60, so we're going to say else, so keep going, else if our record age is greater than or equal to, now we want to be careful here, uh, we could say 30, but look at what's going to happen is that this, this bucket is already landing on day 30, so this one we want to stagger, we want to start this at 31, otherwise you could potentially have a double counting of an item. Uh, it's called double bucketing, a uh, very typical problem. So we just want to be very mindful of what we're doing. So if, if, our, if our date is between 0 and 30 days old, then give it 30 days. Otherwise, if it's uh, let's say greater than, my apologies, if it's greater than or equal to 31, and if it's less than or equal to 60, then we're going to call it 60 days. Else, and, and whenever you're using an if-then-else, there's always a final catch-all you're going to want to think about putting in there. So, uh, so what the formula is going to do is it's going to evaluate this record age. And if it's uh, greater than or equal to 0 and less than or equal to 30, it's going to put it in the 30 days bucket. Otherwise, it's going to evaluate it again. If it's greater than or equal to 31 and less than or equal to 60, then it's going to call it 60 days. Otherwise, it needs to know what to do with it if it doesn't fall into those two categories. So we're just going to put an else old, or we'll call it legacy. So if it doesn't fall into any of these previous categories, that final else will trump it and it's going to land into the legacy bucket. So we're going to go ahead and uh, always check your formula here with the X-2 button. Nowhere is found. Very good. We'll go ahead and save that. And again, actually, I want to remove my state. Real estate is always an issue on Crystal Reports. So I'll move that over. Move my age back here. And that will preview. So keep in mind that the, the age bucket formula is looking at this number here being the record age formula. And based upon that number, it's kicking out a value. So in this case, I actually only have two records that were created in the last 30 days. I did them specifically to demonstrate this. Uh, the rest are legacy. But you can get the idea here that this, this uh, age bucket can now operate on other values on the record and then 
again, it's going to kick out just this text value. Now, once you have that going for yourself, it's a very easy deal to then group on that formula. So we can go ahead and insert a group. And we want to group on our age bucket. And now we're going to get a list broken into uh, groups. So now, we, now here's a here's a nice thing to to know too. Uh, we've done all this really hard work on this age bucket formula. It's kicking out legacy 30 days or 60 days, right? But man, when I print the report, it's not sorted right because T comes after L and the alphabet. So what we're actually going to do is tell the group to use a specified sort order. And the way we do that is we're going to go to our group expert. And that's underneath the report menu. Go to change group expert. And then that's going to show you all of your defined groups in the report. I'm going to go ahead and go to options. And instead of ascending, okay, you, should, you could get away with descending probably, but we want to be very sure about what's going on here. So we're going to say specified. And when I select specified, I get this specified order tab. So I can say I can now define the explicit order in which my group should list itself. So first I want 30 days and then I want legacy. Why doesn't 60 days appear in that list even though my formula is returning it? Because my report contains no 60 days records. Uh, I guess I just wanted to make that clarification. So now I hit OK. Now I preview. Now I have 30 days first and legacy next. So it would be a very easy thing to actually reuse the code in this age bucket formula and instead of using a actually it's even easier than that because remember this is calling the record age formula and if we wanted to change the date field that this was all working with all we have to do is change it in one spot in the record age formula because remember that's calculating the number of days that have passed since the creation date so we would just change the field name there uh, again I've run into a lot of situations where I, I build monster reports for clients and they'll want to make a very slight change which, which is fine but then I'll realize that I kind of painted myself into a corner, so to speak, of some of my formulas. So I'll have to end up going ahead and uh, editing literally two dozen, three dozen formulas where if I just thought a little harder about it before I wrote the first one, I could have reused some values and made that big, long, arduous task of updating the report like a, like a five or ten minute deal. <clears throat> Okay, so that's fun with date math. And again, uh, once your back end data values are indeed date types, you can perform simple math on them. And, and just to be sure, the default number that, it, that Crystal will return is always the number of days. Uh, there are spe special functions that you can use to calculate number of months, uh, so on and so forth. Uh, at this point, I'm going to go ahead and actually delete my group here. And I guess we can leave that stuff there. Okay, because what I want to look at now is how to use mid or in string. And, and, and if you're not familiar with the mid function, um, you kind of have to be. Uh, it, it's a very basic, fundamental function that, that, that programmers use to cut strings out of other strings. And string, I just mean a piece of text. So think about your contact field as a, as a string. Think about gene space marks as one string. So a very uh, useful thing to be able to do in that case would be able to um, grab the marks out of that. Or in this case, grab the Todd out of Justin Todd and call that the last name without having to explicitly store the last name somewhere special in our database. So a, a very common problem that we have is things like splitting the last name out of, of a contact field because you can't always say the last four letters, right? Because coyote is longer than four and marks is longer than four. So we have to find a way to just grab the last word, right, within our contact field. And more than that, it has to be the last, the, the reason why it's the last word is because there's a space 